know Brandon, are, do you need to head off? Or, I know you're doing yeah. the second show. I, yeah, I think I got to bail after this one. But no, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's always a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. yeah love of course. You. Where can yeah. everybody go to vote for you? Well, apparently now it's uh, <laughs> uh, different than usual. Now it's uh, Brandon Herrera for Congress.com is where you can find me. Uh, so you can see some of the other issues and things we talked about. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll have to do an update here before too long. All right. I also okay. wanted to extend the invite to all you guys, too. We're doing another big creator range day down here in Texas on uh in in early early december so you know if you guys want to come on down make the trip kyle will have plenty of flamethrowers and uh air rifles and i don't even know if i'm supposed to be around guns <laughs> you can look at them the government can't get you for that i better revert. <laughs> careful no, but also be like how like oh, think fast <laughs> that's 15 yeah. years boy that also, if any like of fun. you guys would like to come down or do the unsubscribe podcast we'd be more than happy to have you guys Cool, thank you. I'm, I'm definitely down there. That sounds like fun. Yeah, well, I mean, cowboy boots are a great way to, to boost up your height. You know, if you're a yeah. little guy. I forgot to bring lifts lifts to the the meetup thing oh uh, i went to that shooting event the the demolition ranch met a, a shit ton of people that was a ton of fun but man harley's enormous that's <laughs> he is a tough guy to to take a, a picture with and not look like an idiot because he Absolutely. really is like he is like i met sam hyde as well and sam's a tall guy Harley is noticeably taller than Sam. Like yeah. Har Harley is just ev the only person I saw the entire trip that was taller than Harley was that professional wrestler Goldberg. Like that was Goldberg, <laughs> Goldberg was there. And he's like, taller though. That guy's huge. All right. Let, all right. I, <laughs> or maybe I'm I mixing him up with a dip, another I, big bald wrestler. That's the guy. I want to hear more of this, but I just want to remark on if Goldberg is literally bigger than Harley, then that is one of the scariest human beings that I can imagine right now. Because he used to be such an athlete with with those, uh, those traps and everything on WWE or Raw mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm telling you, Harley is gargantuan. When he yeah. sat down in my car, his head almost touches the ceiling. Oh, yeah, wow, look wow. At Harley. They, they have a picture like standing next to each other. And who knows? It was very uneven ground there. But mm -hmm. there's another one where Harley is shorter than him. And you can just see the like the width of him and whatnot. So, yeah, I met Chuck Liddell. That was <laughs> neat. <laughs> Dude, that guy you has look like hands. You take him. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you look like you right. take him. Dude, that guy has hands like a holiday ham. Like when I <laughs> when I like shook his hand, it was like this is these are the knuckles of someone who's like practiced a, like old boy against a concrete <laughs> wall and just girthened them up a lot. But uh, yeah, you them see, over and over. You see Windagoon in the background. Yeah, got to meet a a bunch of the boys. That was uh, mm. see we Harley came up with this idea. He's like, hey, you guys, all sit on the back of this big truck, and then I'll take the picture, and we'll all look around the same height. size. And I'm like, that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Yep. Isn't it great? Wendigoon and Harley, the same size. Wendigoon, 10 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, Wendigoon. And that's, uh, do you know the YouTube channel Coffeezilla? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I that's I that's Coffeezilla. Him. Super, yeah. super nice guy. I enjoyed talking Smart to him. Guy. Spent a lot of time with uh, Wendigoon hanging out. Wendigoon was like my, my purveyor of firearms there. Like I got there right away, said hi to him. And he's like, have you shot anything yet? I'm like, no. I'm like, but I want to shoot a Tommy gun super duper bad, uh, Isaiah. Take me over there. And so he goes over there. I like start to touch a Tommy gun and they're like, don't touch it. And I'm like, all right. And so, <laughs> then, <laughs> so then I uh, like it was it was unloaded and everything. They're all just sitting out because other people were going up and touching them. And so I was like, oh, I guess I can I can do that. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Wendigoon grabs a magazine and is like, just starts loading it up for me. And I'm like, this is great. I've got like a, a shotsman, a bullet uh, king next to a me. A gun caddy. Yeah, a gun caddy. And so he loads it up for me. I, I shoot the uh, the Tommy gun. And I only, I shot like the first seven or eight, like trying to hit, hit the little like plink, plink, the steel thing. And then the big 
gunman next to me was like, hold her down. And so I was like, you're right. What am I doing? It's like <laughs> held it down. And that was really cool. It didn't kick as much as I imagined mm. it would. It was like, it's like the gun itself was so heavy, like that, that wood. They shoot them one handed a lot. It really, I wasn't about to, to disrespect this guy's Tommy gun. I was going, you know, two hands on it. Do you and think so, you could have held it one handed? Like you're, you're a strong guy, but you could. Yeah. Yeah. I could have held it one hand. What Child I wanted could. to do more than one Very handed good. is I wanted to hold it down to my side with like a cigar mm. in my mouth kind of thing. But that seemed like I'm not about to do that. That seems yeah. uh, not the correct move here. <laughs> and so I shot that. And then uh, I was just looking around with, with Wendigo and all the other guns. And I'm like, I want to shoot an MP40, man. Like, those are so cool. The two I had on my list was Tommy Gun and MP40. And I thought like Tommy Gun was going to be my number one fave because it's the coolest looking thing ever. The like after I pulled the trigger to shoot the MP40, like I almost had to be like, is it on? Is it <laughs> is our bullets coming out the end of this thing? Because like you could put that like rest on the bridge of your nose as you're pulling it. And there's just no fucking movement in it at all hmm. it's like Is nothing that, it was so so cool barrel have a compensator on it the one i shot did not no huh. they had one okay. with a compensator and one without and I, I someone else was using the the suppressed one and so i threw the the regular one out there shot that that one was that's my my new favorite gun that thing is Get so one. cool. Aesthetically, it's cool. It feels cool to shoot. It had one of those like fold down and back, like that thin skeleton looking Are we shoulder. Still talking about rest. The MP40. The MP40 like you're yeah. talking about like a paratrooper yeah. MP40. Like it probably did it fold under. It folded under. Yeah. Neato. Yeah. It was yeah. super sweet. Um, the other one had a skinny silencer on it. Maybe. It was fatter than I would have thought. The the silencer okay. on it. Yeah. I, it, it's coincidentally, I just got recommended a video of a silenced mp40 like a, a youtube short of some going and i was like mm -hmm. the same fucking anyway i've never shot an mp40 that's pretty neat really uh, oh damn yeah. i figured you, that would be one you like i was no. uh, after shooting the tommy got obviously different cartridges but like i was blown away at how quiet and easy to shoot no no discernible kick whatsoever on the mp40 so that was fucking sweet and then those are the only two things i shot it was mostly just like walking around chatting talking to people uh, you know, talking to, to Wendy Did you and drive there or fly Harley. There? I flew there. I met Bam Margera afterward at the, <laughs> at the <laughs> Black Rifle Coffee guys. Uh, JT from Black Rifle Coffee, his like fucking ludicrous compound. Harley was like, Hey, well, the first night I got there, I had just landed, hadn't even got to my hotel. And Harley and I had been texting the, the week leading up to it. And he's like, Hey, come to this address. You're filming Epic Meal Time with us. And so I was like, all right, awesome. And so I just got in the address, went to this like giant fucking place that has a, a huge gate that has like, of course, the, the Black Rifle Coffee logo and everything. And so like the Uber drives up, drives me up there and drops me off. Yeah, there was us at uh, post lunch, got to hang out with the Million Dollar Extreme, the the Sam Hyde crew, there's Sam and, and Nick hmm. Rochefort and Charles Carroll. And that was really neat. Uh, talking to those, and I talked Man, to you the, crossed the street if you saw those guys coming, eh? <laughs> right, <laughs> dude. I saw someone posted that picture, and one of the comments was like, "This is the worst dressed group of people I've ever seen." <laughs> in the and I was cracking up at that. But There's a lot of character in that group. There's I'm, a I lot of character. For, it was fun. The one on the uh, one on the right with that like camel leather jacket and the cigarette. Yeah, yeah that's Charles. Like He's he rocks. He he was he was fun to chat with. Um, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I was uh, I got there the first night and I'm in my head, like in the Uber on the way over there. I'm like, fuck, fuck. I forgot the lifts. I forgot my <laughs> lifts. I'm going to look like a fucking do you bitch. Have them? Stand no, I, or I I do have some lifts in there that I what's the point now? Amazon. And yeah, I got them off Amazon, forgot to bring them. <laughs> and the first thing I get is like the, the gates open. I'm sitting in the Uber and this giant Jew barrels out of the gate you know, giving me a hug and everything. I'm already on camera. I'm like, it's, I can't, I'm full, I'm full body frame right now. I can't tippy toe it. And so I <laughs> give him a hug, go in. I do a little uh, movie magic where, you know, the, the food had already been largely completed. They just needed me to like sprinkle shit around, slam some dough and, and like roll it out and do some, some of that stuff. Uh, take a shot of Jack, which did that, is vile. Did that take the magic away when you saw that? You know, it was filmed out of order. 
It, it no, I am. I'm not retarded. Like I, I knew that's how it, it actually. I'm gonna be honest. Away. I'm gonna be honest. It did for me. Really? <laughs> you know what took it away for me? How bad the food was. Like I just what you, it's obvious in retrospect, but I didn't know it would be ice fucking cold. But they make so much food that some of the dishes were finished seven hours ago and have just been sitting around. I think they made um like meat sickles or something it was like a, a a spherical ground beef on an ice cream cone mm, and that yeah. ground beef was cooked like yesterday and, yeah and meatballs you eat or something most uh, of this stuff is the same way it was like that's a, a mcrib and chick-fil-a patty bacon lasagna and amir who's uh harley's like chef and one of the main mm -hmm. epic mealtime guys uh didn't know i was gonna meet him that guy is fucking hilarious like genuine did you meet amir when you were doing epic meal time kyle yeah. probably yeah, you guys did he is the name so I think fucking he was in funny. Vermont. yeah really really fun guy to hang around skinny guy kind of ethnic ethnic he's not skinny anymore he's gained a little little weight but he's he's talking about cultivating uh, mass. trying to get it off yeah he's cultivating <laughs> mass exactly <laughs> and yeah so shot the the epic meal time and everything and then afterward we're just in this ridiculous compound house and harley's like i'll take you on a tour and it's you know obviously you know jt from black rifle coffee's place it is like this guy it has zero percent of what notch has which is like i got money and no idea how to have fun this guy knows how to have fucking fun i'm <laughs> like there's a lot of like tire marks clearly in a drifting motion out front of the front of this ridiculous house and harley's like yeah he like drifts his own cars through his driveway sometimes when he gets bored and he's like come to the gym unbelievable gym in a giant uh garage where it's like half garage with like some dune buggy uh, and then the other half is this gym and the ceiling's probably 25 feet and there are giant pictures of mark Wahlberg everywhere what? <laughs> huge pictures yeah just there's a there's like, or he, it's just the it's the mark Wahlberg gym it's like the marky mark gym like you know that picture of him in his underwear when he was jacked and like yes, the yeah. early night that calvin that's klein shot. yeah that's like 25 feet right over where you bench is just <laughs> mark Wahlberg there and then like it's on the pictures, ceiling uh no behind you standing that would be there. funny if he was on the ceiling, so when you're looking up at Mark as you're as you're pressing, <laughs> dude, there's other pictures of Mark. It's like pictures of him from every movie. So it's like him in a, like soldier gear, him with like war paint and stuff like that. And so actually, that's not a bad idea. It was I, cool. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Imagine no, no. if like where you bench, if on the ceiling you had like a picture of Arnold like reaching down, like offering his hand in assistance. <laughs> yeah, don't you want that now? Like a, like do. a Sistine Chapel where he's exactly that, where he's God and man. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's <laughs> both of them. <laughs> Yeah, then he has like a like j just incredible setup. Great backyard, uh little cow wandering around like a cute little cow. Uh like a mini cow or a little a mini cow. cow. Little little mini cow, not a not a small cow, like a different My girlfriend breed, wants a one. real teeny yeah. one. I I wouldn't want to deal with it. Yeah, but there people have them in their homes and I I, I don't know how you house train those but you never see one take a big fucking nasty dump in, in their fancy living room. You just see, look, children, we have a cow that we live with. This aren't our, isn't our life wonderful? And I'm like, damn, that was a cool YouTube short. And I watched like 30 of them in a row until all of a sudden I'm wanting. I grew up with cows. All of a sudden I want one in my house for some reason. They're brainwashing oh, I, me. I've spent so much time around cows in my childhood. I, I'm totally indifferent to them because of my grandparents farm. And then like I saw that little one. I'm like, maybe there's something to. No, no. They'll never get me to stop eating beef. They if I told you to me. hit a cow, could you do it? If I wanted could to hurt my hand. A cow? What you mean to ask is, could he count coup on a cow? Could he lay hands on a cow, cow if he wanted to? But from And the yeah, answer is it's, almost It's, it's not about no. the violence. If I can the, tell, yeah, if the cow doesn't I want me to, it. I'm not going to. Okay. Are you not, are you, do you have some clever trick up your sleeve to get close to a cow? I mean, the I, only clever trick as a kid my grandpa would use, because like uh, they'd all come up to the trough and start eating, and then my grandpa would put me on their back, and uh, like they were when they're like they don't even notice a fucking six year old kid sitting on their back when they're eating. They they couldn't care any. It's like less than a hat to them. If you have sweet, uh, we called it sweet feed. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I've heard it, of that. It, it's these pellets of like compressed grains and silage or whatever. And then they maybe put molasses or sorghum, some sort of sweet stuff. 
And when you crack that bag open and smell it, you're like, damn, that'd be like a good spiced cake or like breakfast, like baked mm. good or something. It smells good in there. You, and you taste it and it's not sweet enough by far, but to a cow, <laughs> they love it. So if you have that, then you can absolutely like scritch on a cow's head at will. Mm. If they, you mm. just shit. That's how we would catch them. We would get them used to the scent. We put some in a bucket and shake it and it makes a noise. And now we feed them. So the next time you want them to come, you just need to make the noise. You don't even need the food. They hear the noise and they'll come. Yeah. Um, my grandpa would just like shake that bucket and they would all like come sprinting. They, yeah. They but if you try to go is. out into a field, uh, you know, with, with, with wings, when we went out in the field, try to get some pictures of him with the cows and stuff for those posters. I've still got a bunch of those posters, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we'll put them with the Tech Tuesday t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they uh <laughs> but but if we had tried if you go in that field even if they're mostly docile cows that have never been fucked with they're not like feral the idea of touching one is just silly like no yeah no i, I that's don't a want to big touch. fast animal like like they're not, you think of a big dumb fat cow that thing mm-hmm. can run like 30 miles an hour or something yes. like yeah. yeah i and when i tried to do it i was more athletic than now maybe i was 32 playing jujitsu and hockey and stuff all the time Mm-hmm. no chance of catching a cow oh no mm-hmm. like i i knew like all the cow tipping and all like the you know slapping a cow hitting it like i knew that was all a meme it wasn't until i like met people later in life that like i guess weren't from Missouri or weren't around cows that they're like yeah you could just go hit a cow and it's like are you have fun good luck, <laughs> like, good luck. You're, it's not going to be dumb and dumber where you bounce off of it you're never going to mm-hmm. get the opportunity to bounce off of it because mm-hmm. it will like what happened dumb cattle. and dumber they bounce off a cow they try and do cow tipping and dumb and dumber oh. and they keep like running into it and then just like slipping in the mud and, and it's all, all goofy and silly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good movie, but we yeah, would, it, uh, was, it was a ton of fun going to that. Event. A, oh yeah, for sure. Um, I wish Dude, you, you would be like, like the amount of people like number one, like a little, little ego boost for myself. Like I didn't realize like a lot of people approached me and were like, you're Taylor from PKA. I love the nice. show. That's really good. And then that ego got smacked right back down when uh, the previous night, I the first thing we did after we like did the epic meal and all that, we left to go to Austin, me, Harley, and a couple people to go see. Or I guess it was just me, Harley, and Amir. We drove to Austin, which is like an hour and a half from where we were because Sam Hyde and his crew were doing a stand-up show at this uh, this venue. And so we went there, and I meet all of them beforehand and harley's like i'm like hey taylor nice to you know meet you and you know sam's like yeah 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 good to meet you and harley's like sam or sam like with his like she's short a's i'm much more used to harley's short canadian a's now he's like sam you talked to this guy for like five hours on his show you've met him and harley's like oh yeah yeah i'm retarded i remember and i'm like (laughs) dude I, I didn't expect him to, to recognize me. I was. It, it, I was it may not even be that. So, why? <laughs> it <laughs> it no. may not even be that he didn't recognize you. It's just that sometimes I'm, I'm like pre-programmed to say nice to meet you, and then once I realize like we've met like three fucking times, and I feel kind of bad, but I don't want to be like. Actually, I know that we've met before, but my I'm autistic a little, so I just pre-programmed these phrases that I've been yeah. saying all night and throw them at you. With the main part of my brain is playing games back home where I want to be, <laughs> and I'm I'm sending you like the the guy up front. It, yeah, it didn't <laughs> help that I also fired out a nice to meet you instead of a good to see you. That's mm. yeah, that was wrong. And also, like I didn't like when I got there that night. I'm like, they're they're preparing for a stand-up show. Like, don't. Don't ask any questions. Don't bother them. Like they're, you know, I, I noticed like, you know, we talked to Sam briefly before the show and Nick and Charles and them, but they're like thinking about what they're about to do on stage. And so I'm like spending most of that time the first night I was like chatting with, uh, with the guys who are in his crew, um, like Ben and Chris also very cool guys, but their stand up was hilarious. Uh, I'm hoping that Sam, Nick and Charles all put more in their stand up, do a lot more of it and, and, you know, get known for that as well because it was really genuinely very funny um and then it was the next night that was the fucking like what a, like this this is like a dream of like we you know like weird mishmashes of people occur in dreams sometimes where you're just like oh what's my second grade teacher doing at my 30th birthday tony soprano like, what dreams. the fuck yeah. yes tony <laughs> soprano dreams and it was like the second night after the shooting day when we went back to uh jt's place that 
awesome compound. And I was like, this is fucking surreal. Like having a beer with like Sam Hyde and all of those guys and Bam Margera's here. <laughs> and I get a picture with Bam. The first thing Bam, like Harley's like, hey, Bam, this is my buddy Taylor. I'm, I want to take a picture of you guys. And Bam, like immediately just like, lifts up his pant leg and he's like, I got to show you a new tattoo I've got down here. And he's like, he's totally sober now. He doesn't do anything, but he like lifts his leg up and he's got a million tattoos. So it's like hard to zero in on the one he's looking at. And it's like just a picture of a baseball bat that has like a football on top instead of a baseball. And it just says queer as a baseball, a football bat. Ah. And I'm like, and um, there must be a reference I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> you've never heard that before. That is very queer. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, I, I can't tell. Have saying. you heard this of the saying? This is a saying. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Queer as a football bat. Okay, well then I'm. Yes, it's, it's it's like saying uh like crook a gay as a three dollar bill or something like that. You heard that one? Oh, like, faker I have. than a th- okay. something or another than a three dollar bill. It's it's the same fucking thing. It's, but it was cool to hear his like side it, of the mouth sure. talking in person. Like, cause he, he actually does that. And so it was, that was neat. Like talking to Bam Margera for, for a couple minutes, uh, meeting Sam and Nick and Charles. I talked to Nick, uh, Rochefort, one of the million dollar extreme guys. Like he's like a major real estate expert, does a lot of, of stuff, knows how to increase value in homes and everything. And I was like, Hey, if I want to fix, I, I brought up my back patio to him and, mm-hmm. and he was like, like I expected him just to be like, oh yeah, you you should probably do something about that. But he was like, no, what's your address? And so like I gave him my address, and he like pulled up my house and was like looking through stuff. And he's like, now nah, what you want to do back here is like this aggregated concrete thing, and you want to do that in your walkway too. That's going to be cheaper, and it's going to look better. It's going to weather nicer. You could dye it different ways. He talked to me for like half an hour about what? you know who is this guy? Nick Rochefort. He's a okay. uh, he knows real estate really well. He owns a um, an antique shop and uh, now does a lot of this stuff with Sam again that they've gotten the gang back together and talk to him about what it's like running an antique shop. He's just a like one of those gift of gab, like mm. clearly can just hold it down with anyone uh, in conversation. So that was a bunch of fun. It was it was so much fun. I'm so glad I went to that event, like talking to everyone, chatting, getting to know people, uh, experiencing that fucking compound was crazy. Like that's like level of level of wealth. I haven't haven't been <laughs> adjacent to ever. So that was pretty fucking sweet. I am definitely going next year if I'm still invited. And, and so yeah, that you Kyle, you would have it. been. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to sell it. You you guys would have had a bunch of fun. Like you, Kyle in particular, because of your connection with the gun thing. You would you would be fucking Kenny Powers at this thing <laughs> like you <know? laughs> because like everyone's like is kyle here is fps rush here but I'm if like, i no, know that he's that's not. not what kyle likes I, I think this is the tell me kyle tell me how close i am kyle's scene mm-hmm. is this he would like to give and get attention from like nine people that are there and if everyone else would just leave him alone that's kyle's scene maybe maybe mm-hmm. even uh, like, like like big part of it is like i don't go to gun shoot I'm not, I don't think I'm allowed to touch those guns. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to go there. I'm not allowed to do that. That so, so going there is not gonna be fun for me in any way. And then people are like, oh no, we'll get some BB guns for you to shoot. It's, oh yeah, that'd be that'd be real fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have, have a big laugh about it then. <laughs> this right? isn't like what a vegetarian. Oh, let's make it my Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 like I don't think you understand interpersonal skills very well. Um <laughs> So, so then on top of that, it's like there are some people there. It would be neat to meet. I, I would have liked to have meet uh, meet Bam Margera. Um, that would be neat. But other yeah. than that, like I don't want to be shitty and like say that I don't want to meet Wendigoon. I would like to meet him. But but there are some people there that are like actual enemies. You know, like some of those people hated me for years and gave me guff while I ignored them. But I didn't forget their names. You See, know what I mean? I didn't get any experience like, with like, those guys because I was just being approached by people who were like, oh. Well, I you would here. Well, that's how they would approach you. That's how that you know what I mean. Like, oh, but they were all they, positive thing. All right, nobody, nobody walked up and was like, "Is FPS Russia here?" And then grimace. I, no, I think. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't think be that. nice to him, probably. Oh, but yeah, he's yeah. not. He's I didn't, a Dixie chick. I didn't forget. Here. He's not ready. I didn't forget twelve years ago when you yeah. when you were a shithead to me. 
yeah. um, or tried to be or like tried to like mess with my money in this way or another. Like I didn't forget and I'm not trying yeah. to make beef about it, I, but I have I may have forgiven. I just haven't forgotten. And I don't want to go rub elbows with you now that I can't shoot guns yeah. it's, it, uh, again, again, like it's not anywhere I'd want to be. And also I do not like crowds. You know, I don't, I don't like big, there were a like lot that. more people there than I thought there were like booths like oh yeah like don't you like about boots? crowds because i think i'm maybe the same but i want to hear you phrase it um i i, I think i would get sick for sure um j- mm. just breathing all that breathe there but i don't know i've just never liked all those crowds at those things especially if at that place i'm gonna get stopped and constantly and i don't want to do that either i don't want to take a picture with you frankly i don't mean you but, but it's like, no, I, I really don't want to take a picture with you. No, I'd, I'd rather not be on social media today. You know, like, like, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm going to keep sliding this way. But that's not what I'd say because I'm not a piece of shit. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Tell me how you know me. Let me make up a thing that relates to that and makes you feel special. Oh, wasn't this a great experience? You'll remember forever. And then I'd have to do it 150 more fucking times because we just made a scene. You would this, be doing that all day. I am like a race car with a a good race car with a one gallon gas tank. I am I'm loving this crowd. I'm genuinely enjoying all the interactions, and that'll last for like thirty minutes, and then I want to just turn it off and reduce the crowd to the people I like. Yeah, I like the the organizers of it. Like like shout out Brandon Herrera and and uh, donut operator for the invite. Really appreciate it, guys. Those guys are cool as shit. Uh, like Brandon in particular, because he's doing the political thing. Mm-hmm. My God, like constantly. Like I would, I, I probably only talked to him at the range day for like five, ten minutes at most. Like just chatted for a few minutes, and then it was like people constantly coming up to him, like constantly. Like when he was on here just recently, like talking about how much he's out fundraised people. Like seems mm-hmm. like that's continued, and like he's got a real fucking deal shot at at doing this, which would be sick. Uh, so if you're in Texas, check if you're eligible to vote for him and his his area. Yeah. But I wanted really to cool. hear his positions yeah. on like a bunch of current events. But I didn't do it while he was on the show because I'm not here to gotcha people. Maybe that makes me a bad podcaster. I don't know. But I wouldn't want to gotcha him on anything. I, I want him to 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 succeed. I want him to make it. He's a good dude. How come I, I wasn't? I didn't get an invite to that shootathon that you were at. I knew a bunch of guys there. What did I piss too many people off like usual? I don't know. I don't like it was. It was Brandon Herrera that invited me, and he was on the so show. Then we went. Yeah, he's been on the show uh, a few times, and I was talking to Harley leading up to. It was like right in the middle. Brandon, come on, man! You guys two peas in a fucking pod. That's my real name that he's there. I was. I was like messaging harley leading up to it because we hung out most of the time there in the same same group and i was you guys were you and harley were like having your little tiff online yeah Yeah. you're having your your totally real fight and uh i was like oh man i really hope dick is going to this that would be fun to like meet dick for real chill with him but i was like ah i shouldn't dm him and be like hey are you going to this big get together thing yeah, and then, and if you were like, fuck? I'm not invited, and it's but I'd be like, then I'd have to say, oh, that sucks, bro, because I do not have the clout to just invite someone to this thing. Oh, I, please, I everyone think that, knows that, Taylor. You don't have to say that. Oh, yeah, of it goes no, I, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm just a, a, a jester, just going to go in there and dancing around. That shit was so fun, though. It you would have, you would have had fun shooting machine guns. Nah, shot I don't a Tommy gun, that. shot hey. an MP40. Bunch of guys talking about guns, fucking dumb. Looks stupid. Brandon Herrera is really <laughs> going to be in the U.S. House of Representatives. It, I hope it so. looks like it. I hope he makes it. That'd be fucking sweet. Boy. Taylor, I want to talk about the trip. Was was there like constant machine gun firing going on? Was it that kind of shoot? Was it like always going on? Or it or was, what was, what was the deal? constant. Like yeah. the, it was like 15 big tables up near the shooting area. And there's like eight, 10 feet deep of people waiting at all times to like get to their chance to shoot or like talk to someone. And there's like I guess custodians of these different tables who are handling like, okay, this is, these are my guns. And like you, you shoot these. Yeah, now. Yeah. And like the, I felt like a bitch when I was standing near the Barrett 50 cal, I was talking like uh Wendigo and I hung out a good deal of the day, chatting, talking about life, having a good time. He's a great dude. And we, we were standing by the Barrett 50 cal and I had in my head, like, like a fucking call of duty retard. I was like, 
the pair of 50 cal is like not that loud it's like pretty quiet like compared to the other one so i bet that's not a you know big deal and like i guess it is if you're shooting it but i like i was standing in like the cone of pressure where it like shoots mm -hmm. out like i was standing there talking to wendigoon and like jumped when it when it shot and i'm like oh my god this is so much worse than i thought it would be and like isaiah knows a shit ton about guns and he was like oh yeah like it's not that bad to shoot but you and i are in the absolute mathematically worst place to be right now mm -hmm. when they're shooting this and well, so the guy with the well other than standing in front of it and <laughs> the, barrett, the barrett 50 cal guy would go like bang Bang, 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 and like just shoot it off. <laughs> and like I could feel like my my organs moving a little bit from the the pressure of that thing. It was like you didn't want to shoot standing, that or try to finagle that somehow. Not really. Like it have was, you shot I a fifty cal before? No, I've never shot a fifty cal. And so I maybe I should have taken my opportunity to. Yeah. But so you're it strong was enough so to wield it. Loud. That's the thing. Like, yeah. I, like, if I did it, I would have held it. Like that would have been yes. cool. Um. I. You could absolutely stand and and like lean into that and dump a ten round mag, no problem. You know, yeah. I don't know what fifty cal costs now. <laughs> that thing was <laughs> got to be five or six bucks a bullet, right? I I could get it way back then for like two, but I was getting machine gun ammo that was linked together to go through a machine gun. But it seemed like if I just wanted to buy okay rounds, it was going to be five anyway. Back then, I don't mm. I don't know I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like uh, plasma TVs and it, it, they've stabilized that market forever. But they I had a, a a rocket launcher, but because it wasn't shooting like a real rocket, it was shooting like a dummy one that didn't explode. I wasn't that tempted to shoot it, so I didn't shoot that. Amir from Epic Mealtime, Harley's like cook guy, who's very cool, who's fun to hang out with. Uh, he shot it. Um, I saw was Sam it shoulder, yeah, was it shoulder fired. Was it in like shoulder mounted? Green? No, it was more like, like tannish, tannish and like silver. It has like, one that, like white parts. It's like a tube that like expands like this. It probably did. Yeah, it wasn't like a gigantic one. I only saw like that. I saw Amir shoot it, and then I saw later Sam Hyde shot it. But other than that, it didn't seem like a huge draw because it's like, what's you know, it's not going to blow up. You know, uh, you may it, as it well shoot one of the cool guns. Okay, so I'm guessing it's an M72 Law Trainer. Um, I, I think that is what, what it is. And uh, I had a bunch of those little rockets, but they were expensive. Like there was, it was hard to source them. There was only one guy that I knew of that had them, and they were a couple hundred bucks a shot. Um, but like you said, they were, they're not all that fun to shoot unless you hit an explosive and make it blow no. up because it's just a little, there's a little explosive in there. Yeah. I shot one at the horizon one time, and I, I thought it was going to be like a bow and arrow, how it kind of arcs out and then it lands right there. And it just fucking kept going, dude. I don't know where it went. Town. Yeah, it Maybe next year if I if I go back I'll try the rocket launcher then. But it just it didn't look that fun. Did they have to pay? Because that's no. what I'm. No, no. Everything was like we just showed up and shot. Uh, they they like, they had like a barbecue truck there. All sort. It was it was fucking fun. Like I it was less a gun day and more like just hanging out. Like after the first mm -hmm. ninety minutes, I was done shooting and just. And then it's like, all right, am I gonna like struggle to talk to Wendigoon here in the blast of the fifty cal, or should we just walk? 200 yards that way and like have a real conversation without foam yeah. in our ears yeah you can't have a conversation around those things without active ear uh ear protection yeah. those that was are a great. ton of fun that was so much fun like good gets get next year I, I hope dick masterson's invited i don't want to go sound stupid <laughs> right up, up waiting in line talking to guys like a sewing circle <laughs> have you ever uh have you ever been to a machine gun shoot like the knob creek thing maybe i have not uh, dick have you uh, That's the, like Vegas gun ranges. Okay, so at Knob Creek, Kentucky, they have the world's biggest machine gun shoot every year. Um, and it's, I don't know, a couple hundred yards of tables shooting downrange. And they, they have cars exploding downrange and shit, washing machines exploding and all kind of targets set up. And it's every firearm, firearm known to man going at the same time, just fucking around for like mm -hmm. two or three days. Two or three days. But they sell a lot of stuff. They have like an it's like an outdoor open air firearms market. So you could buy everything from like, there was an SS cap that I still regret not buying for like $800 or something. Uh, but then you can also buy like machine guns and firearms and ammo and all that shit. Or at least last time I went. Yeah. Well, I would definitely shoot machine guns again. That was fun. But it's like, I, I wouldn't want to do that all day. What you want to do is uh is go to one of those things with one of those dudes where 
they just go out in the field with like three or four people and shoot off a tailgate um, with with one of those guys. That would be what was what's fun. Yeah. I have never liked those. All right, now it's your turn. Stand here, point that way. Don't pivot a bit. You'll terrify everybody. And yeah, plink it that. No, you can't tell that you're hitting it because everyone shoot else is shooting it too. All right, you're done. Yeah. Um, do you got to that meet Chuck fun. Liddell? Did you get to speak to Chuck, or did he? Because did, did you get to hear Chuck speak? Is what I mean. I got to say like hello to Chuck Liddell, and that was about it. Just took a quick picture with him and Harley, and then he was like back to to shooting guns. And he's a I don't know what I would have imagined. He's a very thick man, like a mm. a broad guy who would fuck you up if he wanted he had the hands of someone who has punched so many things like so <laughs> like just those like big broad knuckles like that that have been uh, forged on other people's jaws like that's that's what he did right wasn't was he just, was a, he was a big striker right he wasn't a rest he actually was a wrestler oh. he uh, that, that was his background before fighting and uh somehow he used that wrestling base to never wrestle People always had to look for his wrestling. Here's the deal. If you're afraid of my takedown, then you can't just defend my hands. You have to like keep your arms low and and be ready for the takedown. So he would use that to his advantage and just punch people in the face all the time. Yeah. Um, and he, he had the coolest the, name. He had band. the mohawk and the he goatee. Had, and he had those shorts. That's he what I was going to say. Shorts. He had these Iceman shorts. And I swear... You could get a six-year-old to draw Chuck Liddell, and by the shorts and the mohawk, <laughs> like his branding was on. I'm yeah. sorry, and the goatee. Uh, yeah, you just knew what Chuck Liddell looked like, and he had this huge rivalry with Tito Ortiz, the Huntington Beach bad boy. Yeah. And I was a Chuck guy. I was all about Chuck. And Chuck won. He beat him twice. I don't know if he beat him twice and they fought twice, or he beat him two out of three. He had but, like a military well, quit on at this event. So he beat him twice, and then they did this awful thing okay. like three years ago where they drug poor. They brought this man out to fight a Tito Ortiz, who is still quite the professional athlete, and Chuck got some more concussions. Yeah, no they're fuck. about the same age chronologically. Yeah. Is he taller than you, <laughs> Taylor? Like It's hard to tell from angles because Harley almost looks less gigantic. Uh, Harley was squatting like, down, but Chuck and I were like the same height. I was on a little decline. You look okay, like you're about his size. You look stronger he than him, way stronger. I've he would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> that that fight would end when he tired. Didn't <laughs> Chuck <laughs> fight it like didn't Chuck fight like heavyweight? Wasn't he light heavyweight? Yeah, he like was heavyweight. Two That's two hundred and five. Yeah. Cut two. What the f was there not a one eighty back then? For Chuck? What I'm just saying, I'm saying is like 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 I don't know. That man looks there, like there was a one eighty five. Rich Franklin was the champ at the See, time. He couldn't and make 185, I guess, Chuck. I think he was too big. Yeah. But that was that was fun. That guy, Goldberg, I never watched professional wrestling, but he's way bigger than I imagined he would be. That guy's fucking enormous. Fuck. Like, was he the biggest person there? He and Harley were probably the two largest people there. But like Harley like is lean. He's in good shape. Like he's mm -hmm. not heavy at all. Like I, I think I, I think my money would be on Goldberg though. Oh, Goldberg, yeah, would, would fuck Harley's <laughs> ass up. Which, like, shout out Harley. He's, I know, I know, Dick, you and him are having a beef. He We're was, a big fight. he was so much fucking fun to hang out with. Like, spent are you most and Harley of the having weekend. an actual beef? No, no. Oh, okay. We'll see. That depends on Harley. That depends on <laughs> what he has to say about Maddox's uh, three hour documentary slash hit piece on me. It's a piece of genius. <sighs> Oh well, he's right then. If that's what if that's his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be. I want to. Fight uh, have you, you seen? Harley, how have you been in the past five weeks since we were uh, hanging out? Since I last saw you, bad. Really? Oh no. You made me depressed. I made you depressed. Yeah, how you got you? me smoking like six hash joints a day. <laughs> it's because uh, it's because you barely. Me. Yeah, but it kind of started a bit before you, so maybe it's not entirely you. It could be entirely me. <laughs> okay. But since I've seen you, shit's been bad, but like good bad, you know? Good I've bad. I've noticed every night, you spend a day with Taylor, 
And since then, you've just been smoking top and bottoming gay relationships? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so it just took three, four say, days with me, and now he's... Yeah, yeah, not a, it wasn't a day with Taylor. It was a lot of Taylor. It was, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, was Taylor, fun. I thought about it. I was like, I guess Taylor like caught up with as much time as I, I've spent with you, Woody, in real life, like really fast. It was like... Uh, you, <laughs> me and you was a couple times. Taylor was like uh, uh, an intensive course. It was. Mm -hmm. It was like a, like a summer, like three hour course where every morning I was waking up and I was just like, you know, Harley, who's Harley's the fucking man. Harley's the ultimate like hangout guy. Cause like, I just, I'd be on my phone early morning having coffee and I'd be like, I wonder what's going on. I'm going to text Harley, see what's up before I can even like text him. He's yeah, like, you were very here's polite. the plan. Yeah. You were very <laughs> polite. I saw I had to do that. Cause you were very polite. You were like, nah, I don't want to, I'm not going to try and intrude on that. And I'm like, Oh dude, I already lied and told him that you're my cousin. And you're like, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, but I think it's cool. It's cool. It's all good. But yeah. uh, we did uh, spend a Taylor lot of time. shows up like, hi. Am. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying yeah. way too hard to fit in. The saddest <laughs> part was uh was how much uh we brought up kyle and woody <laughs> oh yeah they, i was i just i just especially, wanted my other my other buddies there would yeah especially, especially kyle on range day we, we just really uh it would have like, been so fun mm -hmm. i mean you love you know how cuckold porn works like i'd sit there and watch no, you no, guys no no we thought and, we we thought quite no, a bit about no 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 it. <laughs> see you know you misunderstand see i'd sit there and sort of pretend like i was shooting a gun while you did it uh -huh. every time so it felt like i was no we It'd had a great. plan that at the end you would have you'd be the only person in the line who was shooting the big SUV. You would shoot with mm. a bow and arrow. I see. And it would be kind of kind of silly. We could have got explosive oh, arrows. Yeah. I think explosive arrows. That'd you could be do like that? when the king has his fool come out and like silly night guard, but he's got a wooden sword and they have him fight <laughs> no. like a big stuffed animal. Well, okay, it's not like we're going to be like, all right, uh, uh, Kyle, go up there and shoot the bow and arrow. And then as you're going up there to shoot it, Harley and I are like skittering back to the car. Like, <laughs> what a queer, we're going to go get dinner. Like, like, no, we'd hang out. We have a this good time. Become a recurring no, shooting. Theme. What, what other fun stuff can Kyle watch us do that he doesn't participate in? Kyle, would Wait. you like to watch us like zip line? You could stand on the ground <laughs> oh, while shit. we go by. Dude, you want to come oh, watch me vote? Can I be? <laughs> I want to watch from where they start because I don't want to be with the group when everybody's having fun after. I just want to see them leave me with their fun. <laughs> oh, you know, you, if I were shooting a gun, are you allowed to come up and hold me from behind <laughs> and put your finger over mine? I think so. Yeah. As yeah. long as you don't touch the metal. That That's kind of like an Air Bud rule so style. What's so crazy? <laughs> what's so crazy is I would love to start a channel with FPS Russia. Where he's standing behind me and pulling the trigger on <laughs> like pulling my finger pulling the trigger like just the full loophole please just looking for trouble <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> like fps russia comes back like a big meal time comes back and i need this money <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that would so next time think about it kyle because mm. who knows when big big trump when he gets back in office he might hook you up. He was in office when I lost my rights. Yeah, but this time he's, <laughs> he's playing for He's literally the peeps. person that locked him up. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, but he feels system. bad about it. <laughs> I know he does. He told me. He, I know how it feels fun. now. Now I'm sitting in your shoes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you can kind of catch yeah, up. We went to... A lot uh, of very funny moments. We, Taylor and I, we had gone to lunch with Sam and his, his whole operation and... Uh, I was like vlogging it a whole bunch. I told him, I was like, I'm going to film a bunch of this. I want to have some uh, moments. And every time the camera went on to Sam, he just started talking extensively about Chris from Mr. Beast's team. Yeah. <laughs> and saying all types of stuff that would ensure that this vlog will never see the light of day on my channel. <laughs> and, yeah. Just like, and, he, yeah, and he kept being like, how's this vlog going of yours? Is it good? Or do I need to talk about Chris from Mr. Beast more? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, he ruined your vlog. <laughs> I have a cut of it that's like entirely it's there and there's just so much beat beeping it's like beep 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 and then he's like muslim child beep 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 and a pull long enough to go inside beep 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 and like we're just looking at the cut and we're like this goes this can go somewhere we'll we'll find a home for this yeah <laughs> that was a wild conversation to listen to while i was eating my fucking lamb skewers or whatever the fuck we had at that little yeah what was funny also, some some guy came up to him at the range and they're like yo i'm with some guy and i i edit for mr beast and i love your videos and he was like yeah and the guy was talking and i was there and i'm like wait 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 but yo you make mr beast watch sam hyde and he's <laughs> like yeah jimmy's seen a couple i'm like guys does mr beast love sam hyde does he <laughs> 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 
tell us. Tell us. He's like, no, he's seen a lot of videos. Lot. And then Zap was there. He's like, what about Chris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, a lot of people were like, a lot of people were like clearly trying at the, that event to like get Sam to do something for them, like for, for content or something. Like I, I was with him at the gun thing and someone walked up and was like, oh, Sam, Sam, hi, I'm a big fan of this and that. He's like, will you come over here and on camera be like, fuck Russia. And mm. Sam like He was laughed. wearing a shirt. He was wearing like a Ukraine yeah. shirt also. Sam, he's wearing like a Ukraine shirt and Sam like laughed at him and was like, no, dude. Like, no. I, like, like, I'm not gonna. You want me to like come over there and like do your l political video right now? <laughs> <laughs> like just on a whim? Like that's, that's goofy. What do you, why would you want me to do that? <laughs> That was a fun event. I want to shoot an MP40 again. Oh, he's, yeah, you've got to have some crazy dudes that one. come up to him. I don't think you can would just buy one. Get a semi-automatic one, yeah. The yeah, MP40 I, I, was a hit there, by the way. The way the internet works. Yeah, like everybody liked I, the MP40. I guarantee somebody out there makes like an MP40 semi-automatic things that you could you know, fuck, her, fuck around with and then stick on the wall. For it was sure, better right? than the time. I just like that at, the, at that shooting range, everyone was shooting the MP40 and loving it. Last time you were on, you hadn't yet announced your candidacy for Congress in Texas. How is that going? I, I might move there just to vote for you. Shockingly Kyle well, I might accidentally have a job. Um, so it's, uh, it's been interesting. I, I, so we were already obviously in the preparation stages uh, for a long time before this. Uh, so I was tempted to tease something on the last PK, but I couldn't say anything. Yeah, I would have gotten enough. yelled at, but uh, no, it's it's actually been incredible. So it's kind of, I, you know, I got to that point where, you know, with YouTube and everything, I, I got to the point where I considered, you know, hey, I basically, in my eyes, have won the game of life. Like, I don't have to really do anything I don't want to do anymore. And I just keep doing this because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good business thing and it's, um, and I, I genuinely more. enjoy doing it, you know, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, okay, now I can do some side quests of things that I actually think are important. And so I'm kind of in side quest mode. So I I won my boxing match, and then uh, now I'm yeah. I'm doing this other thing. Which so wait, uh, what, what office are you running for exactly? So uh, U.S. Uh, Federal Congress District Twenty Three. Shit. So this is real deal. This is U.S. Federal Congress. Yeah. So uh, my current opponent is Tony Gonzalez, who uh, just kind of a really really well, I could say it here on this show. Nobody's going to get mad. Limpic Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, what okay. a bitch! I hate that guy. I, the first oh. time, this is the first time I've heard of him. That but guy's he, ugly. Uh, he's ugly, and he also uh, he looks like well, he looks like a lesbian gym coach. But he <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't really in Texas. Yeah, he, I've heard he fucks women, so that's he's guilty. Allegedly, allegedly. Mm. <laughs> but he uh, no, he he voted for gun control, which is an immediate way to piss me off. Um, but he just has what? a bunch of other bad votes. Wait, there's a Republican in Texas running under gun. What gun control what did, he did he vote, vote for? for? Yeah, it was the uh, the bipartisan Safer Communities Act. He basically did a bunch of like red flag laws and stuff like that after gotcha. Uvalde. Yeah. He was like one of ten or fifteen Republicans who voted for it. So bipartisan, mm. but yeah. So we see how, how well those work. Yeah, get the hell out. Yeah, get that guy out well. of here. We just had a perfect case study of the red flag lag, uh, red flag law at work, right? Which one? The main what do you one. mean the one with the manhunt last week? Yeah. Oh what? yeah. Yeah yeah. So that guy, the guy Maine, tries to check himself in. To, I, I, you know. to be fair, which one indeed? <laughs> they, they blend together. <laughs> the one in Maine, I guess there were a lot of red flags. You really got to do something to stand out these days in the in the shooting game. Yeah. What's yeah, the I most? So. What are the memorable ones? What, what are the, the Vegas? Ones? Vegas. Vegas is number Vegas one by is so far. Memorable because, because they so they never many... revisited it. It's just like man, that's crazy. That guy carried. 30,000 pounds of guns and then fired them with well, all they've 10 got the hands. Video. They've got the video of the, uh, I will say, there's, so there's a lot of sketchy shit on that shooting, but I uh, I will say that they did have the videos of the, and it's a little creepy, of the, the bellhop is helping him carry these multiple uh, carriages full of guns, like just gun cases and everything up to yeah. his room. Like, you can't see their guns, obviously, but. They're yeah. probably used to SHOT Show, though. They wouldn't even, like, yeah. whatever. And yeah, the rules just... changed significantly after that about, ho like, guns and, and, and hotels and everything in Vegas. I mean, obviously, but. Damn, that was wild. Yeah. That was the one shooting that I woke up the next day and I was like, this might be the big one. Is there a committee you're hoping for if you win? We're still looking into it right now. Uh, really, okay. I'm, I'm also going to be so, so we're, we're, we're getting to that point where we're looking into specific committees and, and whatnot. But mm -hmm. um, there's a about that do you know who Jeff Jackson is? Do you know that name? He's a North Carolina guy who has the job you're running for, but in North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, you might recognize him because he's like a TikTok star. 
but he's not a joke. It's just the platform he uses to do his right. little two minute videos on what's happening. And it's this really, he's a Democrat, but he comes across as unbiased to me anyway. And uh, he just speaks really soberly about what's going on, what it, what it's really like to do this job. Uh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, you might even get some insight from him and yeah. perspective. I'd love to take a look. But uh, um, I had a point. He talked about the UFO stuff, which was pretty interesting. Mm. And uh, he talked about the huge difference between the representatives when they're on camera and when they're off camera. Off camera, they can be pretty sane and smarter than you'd think. Right. And on camera, they're playing a character. They're actors. I've noticed uh, that. I've talked to a few members of Congress that, like, you know, are dramatically different and not necessarily in a bad way, but like dramatically different on camera and when they're, they're doing their job. And then when you talk to them on the phone or something like that, you see the real person actually come out and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very different kind of, I remember where I was going. He explained the committee assignments and mm -hmm. just, he's like, well, so I'm a freshman. I'm not going to get the most plum committee assignments, but they look at it. I asked for this, this or that. And because I had a military background, they thought I would be a good fit for this one here. So I wonder what they'll look at with your background and be like, ah, oh, this guy'd be perfect for this. Also uh, kind of crazy. Uh, they, something I didn't know until fairly recently, I'm learning a lot about how the inner deeper politics works. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Good. In fact, most of it, not, um, what? Mm -hmm. but it's yeah, surprise, surprise. But the, um, one of the things is you have to, you have to pay for your committee assignments. I had never heard that before. Yeah, so like, is there's a different price uh, associated money with that one. matters, or is it like it's probably seven hundred and seven dollars for that? It's like you know? like a hundred thousand dollars. Oh. What? So something yeah, that like you couldn't afford just on the pay of that job. So crazy. That's yeah. weird, Taylor. It is uh, the pay you of the job. Shit. Stop doing that. Not very. Yeah. Wait, weird. wait. Uh, what's your level of confidence on this? I've never heard this before. I, I think You're... you have to be sponsored for some some bit of it. I, I, like I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I was just watching a video the other day where it was active, like sitting members of Congress talking about that. Huh. And so uh, I think it, it varies wildly depending on what assignment you're trying to get. I wonder if they waive it and stuff. Like, like, So here's the thing that I know. When Kevin McCarthy was going through all those votes to get his speakership, this mm. is back in January, uh, committee assignments were a way that he was winning people over. Like, all right, Brandon, you know, you vote for me over, you know, this silly head and I'll put you on the judiciary committee, which is a good one. Yeah. I wonder if he was able to waive fees. I don't know. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I would oh, here we go. I've got like, one. Oh. It's um, uh, problems with the committee tax in Congress. Less coveted gavels on the B committees, like the transportation and infrastructure committee come with a price tag of $875,000. Wow. Yeah. So none, so no part of this is just. And organic. you would pay that? Like, I, I'm, I'm going to have to. So like, like I said, I've got a, a couple of meetings with some people that have been doing this for a long time. And we're going to try to figure out like exactly how the system works and how. Yeah. And by that, I, I'm not, I wasn't saying, would you want to pay that? I was like, the politician pays that personally or that's like yeah, a yeah, government yeah. collection yeah, thing? That's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I believe so. And I, I think that's why like there's several people that can contribute to that. And that's who do they pay it to? Do. Like who gets that money? Who's the guy like right? straight nice, to the president? Nice. He went yeah. straight, to the, the big straight man. to the big guy. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's how it, it works. all starting to make sense now. Yeah, there's a lot of weird like money stuff, and obviously like having to learn all the FEC rules uh, to like basically how to be able to finance your campaign but not go to prison. That's been really cool. I don't think I'd do very well in, in prison. That's I'm good. You'd be all right. Oh yeah, you'd you'd do well. Kyle did great. Gun guys, they're very likable, <laughs> very charismatic. It it it'd be good. Well, that matters. Yeah. You just have to not shit <laughs> for four weeks and it's really it's really it's Potter. really yeah. important to yeah. know how to work a firearm in a place where none of them are allowed. Thank you.